2.3 introduces a concept of elasticity. So I talked about demand, talked about supply. I'm um, talking about what elasticity of demand and supply is, and then that probably beginning of next week we'll start putting the two curves together on the same ground. So what elasticity is? It's a measure of how responsive consumers and producers are. So we know when there is a change in price, for demand anyways, price goes up, point of demand is going to go down, price goes down, point of demand is going to go up. So that law of demand, that inverse relationship. What elasticity tells us is how responsive consumers are to that change in price. You know, if the price goes up, do they buy a little bit less or do they buy a lot less? That no supply it tells us you know, how responsive are producers going to be if there's a change in price. If the price goes down, do they produce just a little bit less or do they produce a lot less based on that change in price? And what we're going at is ultimately it's based on the percentages of how much those two things change. And so elasticity all refers to is how responsive consumers and producers are to a change in price. So elastic. It's very stretchy, changes very easily, it's like a rubber band. So elastic demand changes very easily. We'll also talk about inelastic demand, meaning it does not change very easily. And so elastic means consumers are very responsive. Consumers change their preferences very easily based on change in price. Or if it's inelastic, consumers do not react as easily to a change in price. So, talk about a couple different goods. And so, we assume that prices for these goods double. So, if the price of tacos doubles, do you think people are generally going to buy the same amount or are they going to buy less? Yeah, they're probably going to buy less. And they're probably going to buy a cheaper substitute good. Alright. What about medicine then? Are they going to buy the same amount or are they going to buy less? Yeah, they're probably going to buy the same amount. You know, what if we're referring to something like insulin or you know some kind of medication that's needed daily for health? But yeah, they may not be happy if the price goes up, but they're probably still going to buy the same amount unless they have to. What about gasoline? You're going to buy the same amount, the price goes up. For the most part, yeah. Um, once again, you're not going to be real happy about it. You may buy a little bit less, but you know, if gas goes up 50 cents, you're not just going to throw your hands up and say, well, you know what, I'm not buying gas anymore. Because what are you going to use to substitute it? Run. There are other options, but these walk. You know, for the most part, you're still going to continue to buy that gas. You're just going to pay more for it. Um, luxury goods are going to be what we call elastic. Luxury goods are responsive to a change in price. You know, if there's a, a hundred thousand dollar yacht, I don't know what yachts cost, obviously, it's public school. Um, I don't care just buying yachts, but you know, let's assume it costs a hundred thousand dollars. If there's a ten percent discount, well, you know that's ten thousand dollars. That's a good chunk of money off. And so luxury goods tend to be very elastic. You know, diamonds are very elastic. You know, there can be a relatively small change in price, but it's going to have an effect on how much people buy. Think milk's elastic or inelastic. Milk actually tends to be fairly inelastic. That, you know, if you go to the grocery store and you know you're going to buy two gallons of milk, well, you know, if the price is 50% you know, cheaper, are you going to buy three or four gallons? Probably not. You're probably still going to buy that same two gallons of milk. So it works both ways. So even if there's a price decrease, you're still going to buy typically the same amount of milk. You know, if it's a little bit more expensive, well, you probably know what you're going to use those two gallons of milk for. So you're probably still going to buy the same milk, even if it's more expensive. Now, of course, if it was like $10 a gallon, something ridiculous or not, but you know, we're talking reasonable changes that you know if you expect to pay a dollar ninety nine and you get there and it's two forty nine, well you're still gonna buy 
you know, those two gallons of milk, even though you saw like a 25% increase in price, which is a fairly big jump. So, anyways, starting to get the idea. Elastic goods are very responsive, inelastic goods are not very responsive. So, while we talk about knowing how consumers will respond to a change in price, it's useful to the firms, meaning the businesses and producers, decide what to charge and you know, should they have sales or not. Um, you'll notice some goods have sales all the time. So furniture stores have sales all the time because they have fairly elastic demand for their goods. Gas stations don't really have sales on gas because they know you're going to buy that product regardless. There's no reason to discount it. You're going to buy it no matter what the price is. So I'll give you a deal on it. Um, it helps firms determine how many substitutes are in the market. The more substitutes there are, the more elastic the good is. We'll get some examples of that. And it's also used by the government to decide when and how much to tax a good. Because depending on the elasticity, determines who pays more of the tax. And we'll look at that a little bit later on, too, what taxes it says. All right, so inelastic demand. The way that we technically determine this is we look at the percent changes in price compared to the percent changes in quantity. So if you've got a greater percent change in price than you do in quantity, it's what we term inelastic demand. So you can see price has gone up 20%. Quantity has only gone down 5%. So a relatively large change in price had a much smaller effect on the quantity purchased by consumers. So for inelastic demand, you're going to have a greater percent change in price than you do in quantity. And so we're actually going to get to a point to where you will divide the percent change in quantity by the percent change in price. We're actually going to get an elasticity coefficient that we can put a measure on how elastic or how inelastic a good is. But for right now, as a general rule, just know the percent change in price is greater, it's going to be inelastic. I'll give you some examples down there, gasoline, milk, diapers, chewing gum, medical care, toilet paper. People are generally going to buy the same amount, even if there's a change in price. Again, gas, medicine, highly inelastic goods. A couple characteristics. There are a few substitutes for these goods. Uh, you know, there's your car takes gasoline, well, there's nothing else you can put in your car that's going to make it run. It's not efficient. Um, you know, certain medications, there's no substitutes for those. And so, inelastic goods have few substitutes. Typically, they're necessity items or things you have to have. That's why you're going to pay the price regardless. More times than not, these actually take up a smaller portion of your income compared to elastic goods. Typically, you need them sooner rather than later. You know, we know your car takes gas. Well, if you're on the way to work and your gas light's on, you need that gas pretty soon. But you know, if we're looking six months, a year down the road, you know, maybe you're going to college and maybe you don't necessarily need a car. Well, maybe you can take a bus. Maybe you can ride a bike. Maybe you can walk. Maybe you can carpool. And so, the more time you have to decide on something, the more elastic it becomes. The more immediate you need it more inelastic it is. And then when we calculate the coefficient, you're going to get a number that's less than one. It's just the percent change in quantity divided by the percent change in price. That number comes out less than one. We're dealing with an inelastic good. Right. Elastic, it's the other way around. You're going to see a greater percent change in quantity and you do in price, meaning a small change in price is going to have a greater effect on the quantity that consumers are going to buy. I'll give you some examples down there, soda, boats, beef, real estate, things of gold, just meaning consumers are very responsive to a change in price for elastic goods. A couple characteristics, it's a lot of substitutes typically for elastic goods because the way it works, the price goes up for the particular product. Well, if there's a lot of cheaper substitutes, well, you're just going to buy the cheaper substitute. That's generally what we do. It's a you know, cost-benefit relationship. 
you know, kind of say, well, it's worth more to me just to buy a knockoff product than it is to pay more for the name brand. Typically, these are luxury goods, like I talked about. Um, these make up the majority of your income. Number four, you have more time to decide. So I talked about the further down the road it is, then the more elastic a good becomes, because you have more time to consider your options. If you need it right this second, then it's fairly inelastic. And then when we calculate the coefficient, percent change of quantity, about about percent change of price, you're going to get a coefficient greater than one. Okay, right, questions so far on this? Make sense? Kind of get the general idea, elastic versus inelastic? Right. So I throw these in there. Like I said, I don't know. I guess this is supposed to be secret future stuff, but I think there's actually good information in So I'll give you a second to read that, and then we'll talk about it. Saying that typically, well, read it. So I'll just leave it as a decimal. So 
if you were to plug it into that formula, you can see what you come up with there. But it's that same mu minus old over old. Our fob is going to be very elastic. 0.5 is going to be inelastic. Just based on, and that's how you calculate that elasticity coefficient. If you take a change of coins, divided by the percent change of price. We're going to practice this. That's how you get that coefficient. So. So it gives you some examples there. It's already calculated for you. So if you came up with a 1.27 for your elasticity coefficient, would you say that's elastic or inelastic? Elastic. Elastic. Good. So we're looking at is it greater than one? It's elastic. Is it less than one? It's inelastic. That's all we're doing here. It's just comparing is it greater than or less than one. So you can go through. Two is inelastic. Three is elastic. Inelastic. Inelastic. That it's all based on whether it's greater than one. So, again, you know, unless you read that, it's kind of wordy. Pretty much, because you don't get a calculator on the test, but they want you to more so know the concepts of elasticity. I mean, you may, may have to calculate it here and there, but more than anything, they want you to understand what elasticity is more so than a skill base to decide to calculate it over and over. And a lot of times they may give you a elasticity coefficient and then you have to make the determination of whether it's elastic or elastic. But, uh, so here, once again, percent change in quantity divided by percent change in price. So the first one, you can take 50, divided by 10, you're going to get 5. 5 is greater than 1, it's elastic. Um, you know, the second one, price of water increases to $2 to $3. actually a fairly handy slide. Um, it shows you the, the slope of the curves associated with different variances of elasticity. So that first one, perfectly inelastic, just means there's a set quantity in the market. That no matter what, the quantity cannot change. No matter what the price does. Relatively inelastic is typically a fairly steep demand curve. It's not based on the slope, though. It's always based on the numbers. But when you calculate it, you're going to get that coefficient of less than 1. Unitary elastic just means the percent changes are the same. So the percent change in quantity is equal to the percent change in price. You're going to get a coefficient equal to exactly 1. Relatively elastic, typically characterized with a more shallow or horizontal demand curve, you get a coefficient of greater than 1. And perfectly elastic <coughs> me, means there's one price in the market that you know, quantity can change, but price is never going to change. We see this a lot when we get to Unit 3. We start working with the market structures, especially perfect competition. Um, we'll see a perfectly elastic demand curve quite a bit um, when we get to the next unit. So, but that's fairly handy just to kind of remind you of those. Right. What you'll use more so than actually calculating the coefficient is called the total revenue test. So this is a different way of determining elasticity. It's a generalized rule to figure out is it elastic or inelastic, but it's not going to tell you how elastic or inelastic by calculating the coefficient. But all you do is multiply the price times the quantity 
before the change and the price times the quantity after the change. Right. So if price goes up and total revenue goes up, because what you're looking at, the, the boxes are your total revenue. Revenue is the amount of money that a business brings in. So if you take the quantity they sell, times the price they sold it for, that's their revenue for that product. That's the total revenue for an inelastic demand curve, total revenue for an elastic demand curve. Those yellow boxes represent revenue. So if price goes up for an inelastic demand, total revenue is going to increase. Meaning the price went up, people still, people still bought generally the same amount, so therefore more money was generated. If the price goes up and total revenue decreases, then it's going to be elastic. So for total revenue tests, all you have to do is do price times quantity before the change, price times quantity after. Let's say change, we're talking about a change in price. So if price goes up, total revenue goes up, it's inelastic. And vice versa, if price goes down and total revenue goes down, it's inelastic. If they do the opposite, the price goes up, total revenue goes down, and you're dealing with elastic demand. This is the quickest and easiest way. If the test asks you to determine elasticity and they don't want to know the coefficient, total revenue test is your way to go. It takes about three seconds to calculate it. So that gives you the relationships there. It's in Inelastic is direct, they do the same thing. Elastic is inverse, they do the opposite. Unit elastic, they're just going to stay the same. That's when your percent changes are equal. So you can see there, the price went down, total revenue went up from 1,000 to 11.5, so that is elastic. This is your quickest and easiest way to determine elasticity, total revenue test. So I would make sure you have this in your pocket to the test because it's, it can help you out in a lot of different ways. If all they want to know is elastic versus elastic. That way you don't have to calculate all the percent changes. So it tells us the price went down. Total revenue increase or decrease? Increase. Increase. So what does that tell us? Elastic. Good. It's elastic. So before the price change, total revenue was $250. After the price change, total revenue was $270. So the price decreased, the total revenue increased, therefore it's an elastic. Good. So you would just multiply 10 times 25, and then 9 times 30. And assess what's changed. That's the total revenue test. That way you don't have to do $10 minus $9, divide it by $9, you do all the math. Price times quantity before the change, price times quantity after the change, make the determination. Alright, so that's it for 2.3. 2.4 is the price elasticity of supply, but this goes much quicker. We'll be through this one in a couple minutes because that's the exact same, but the exact opposite. So, price elasticity of supply. You already have the general idea of what the price elasticity of demand is. Price elasticity of supply now says, all right, how responsive are producers to a change in price? Remember, the higher the price, the more they're going to be willing to produce. That's why that supply curve slopes up and to the right. Well, now we got to figure out if there is a price change, how responsive are they? Are they still going to produce generally the same amount, or are they going to produce a lot less and go do something else for their resources? 
Big thing on this slide, total revenue test cannot be used for elasticity of supply. If they want to know elastic versus inelastic for supply, you've got to calculate it all the way up. Very rarely do they do that though. More times than not, it's going to be price elasticity of demand or one of the last two elasticities we're going to talk about. This is probably the least common one on the test. But if they were to throw it out there, you know, just make a note, hey, I'm going to have to use the new minus old divided by old, get your percentage changes, percentage change in quantity divided by percentage change in price, and get that coefficient. Like I said, more times than not, this one doesn't come up on the test, so the total revenue test does not work on this. All right, work fidget spinners, elastic or inelastic supply. What do you think? So it was a generally probably small change in price for these spinners. Do you think there was a large reaction by producers? Did you see these things everywhere overnight? Yes, that tells you they're elastic. Producers were very easily able to reallocate their resources and they were able to produce a supply really quickly. So they were very responsive to a change in price. And so that actually shows you the numbers there. It's been on May 5th, 2017. I wish it gave us the actual revenue for how much these companies made. I'm sure it's out there somewhere, but um, you can see from about March to May, these things were everywhere. I remember them in class. It was awful. But all you heard was those little things just over and over and over again. But manufacturer was able to quickly make them and so the quantity supply was very sensitive to a change in price because they reallocated those resources because they knew they could make profit. And there you go. They were everywhere overnight. Masks are extremely elastic. Um, you saw producers very quickly reallocate their resources in the production of masks and all this stuff. Um, hand sanitizer is very elastic because you saw a very quick change in production to try to mass produce it. So anything that they can ramp up production of an entirely different product really quick, it's very elastic. They're very responsive to a change in price. Um, now, of course, some of that is relative to consumer demand. They knew people needed it and wanted it, but they knew that they could, they could produce it, or some producers could produce it easy. And so when the prices went up just a little bit, they started producing a whole lot more because you know, used to probably didn't pay very much for a mask, and then when people had to have them, well, they knew they could charge for them, so they did. Right. We know it's how responsive producers are. The formula is the exact same, percent change in quantity, about about percent change in price. Uh, inelastic supply means that they are not very responsive to a change in price. Elastic as they are, since most of us have an inelastic supply in the short run versus the long run. Those are terms we'll get to when we get to production costs, but short run means the relatively near future, long run just means somewhere further down the road. So, once again, goods become more elastic over time. It works for supply and demand. So, the more time you have, the more elastic things are. Uh, Perfectly inelastic just means the quantity supply is not going to change. So you have a set quantity that is never going to change. General characteristics. So inelastic, they're harder to produce. There's high barriers to entry, meaning new firms cannot enter into this market very easily. Um, and we'll talk about a lot of this when we get to the market structures. but. You know, something like producing a mask or a hand sanitizer is very easy to enter into the market um, because they're all generic products for the most part. Now, if you want to compete with Tesla or Apple or you know, some kind of major company, well, it's going to be harder to start a business to compete with them. So that'd be a higher barrier to entry. High cost or specialized inputs, once again, you know, you want to start building your own rockets to complete with Tesla, well, you're going to have a pretty uphill climb to do that. Um, hard to switch from producing alternative goods and elasticity coefficient of less than once. That stays the same. Elastic, they're easy to produce. There's low barriers to entry. Many firms can come and go very easily in these markets. There's low cost or generic inputs. 
easy to switch from producing alternative goods and the coefficient varied of one. So I mean, if you think mask and hand sanitizer, they are super elastic. That's a very culturally relevant way to look at things right now because we saw them just ramp up overnight. Slope to your curves. We know perfectly inelastic. There's a set quantity, relatively inelastic and steeper. Unitary elastic just means that percentage changes are the same. Your coefficient's going to be exactly one. More relatively elastic typically is more horizontal. And then perfectly elastic supply, there's one price in the market. So it's a perfectly horizontal curve. Um, if you were to calculate it, it's again, get your percentage changes, new minus old divided by old, and then provide or divide percent change in quantity by percent change in price. That gives you a coefficient of 1.5. 1.5 is greater than 1, so that is elastic supply. Now I'm going quick, but I feel like this is all stuff you either get or you'll get once you start working hands-on, but you've got those formulas. All right, so which of the following must be true for the original Michelangelo sculptures?